Today we're going to talk about sketching in SOLIDWORKS. Good, high quality, well thought out sketching in the SOLIDWORKS software is one of the best design tools that you have. Let's just go ahead and start sketching something and I am literally going to kind of doodle off the top of my head and bring up some of the basic things to look for. Um, so let's just start a sketch, start a, start a part I should say, and then I'll start a sketch on the front plane. Remember that when we are in a sketch environment, we do get some visual clues up here in the corner, confirmation corner they call it. We get an icon to cancel, an icon to close the sketch, and we get this frame of the plane that we're working on. We get the origin lighting up, and so there's some reminders that we really are in a sketch environment. You know, the simplest thing to sketch is a rectangle, probably. I mean, a line could be easier, but a rectangle starts to give you something. The first kind of key to sketching is to make sure that you grab on to the origin somehow. Now, a real easy way to just get started so you're doing that is just grab it and then open up your rectangle. And now that I've grabbed on to that, if I go and dimension these sides, the thing will be fully defined. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Notice we got some black, some blue. From previous times we've talked, we talked about that basically all black is fully defined, all blue is, is underdefined. This is still underdefined because not everything's nailed down. If you want to test whether you're defined, besides just looking down here, exercise the sketch. Grab a hold of it and move it around so you can see what kind of rules it already has. It implied some rules that I did not directly give it, and that is this horizontal relationships and vertical relationships. And because I started the sketch right on the origin, it put a coincident relationship right on there. So that keeps things from kind of floating around, and you know where you are in, in 3D space. So if I go ahead and put a dimension on these, and we'll just make that 2 and 3 quarter inches, and this one we'll make one and a half and now we'll click out of dimension and if you look you'll see that we're fully defined look down here at the bottom and everything's in black if that weren't attached to the origin then we would not be fully defined I'll go ahead and delete that relationship I'll just click on the icon hit the delete key and now everything went blue. Does that mean the whole thing is undefined? No, we have the length of it, we have the width, we can move it around in space. And there's nothing wrong with that, inherently wrong with it, but basically we want to be able to tie things down to an exact spot. And you'll see as we go farther into more complex models why we want to do that. The, the simple explanation of why is wherever this origin is, that's where our standard planes, our XYZ planes, these guys, front, top, right planes, are going to cut right through the middle of that. If I go highlight that front plane, it's on there. If I go highlight the top plane, it goes through the origin. Highlight the right plane, it goes through the origin. Another way you can do this, obviously there's more than one, is I could attach this, that is at the origin, to this. I'll just right click on the line on the bottom and select its midpoint. And then I'll go up and control grab that origin and just tell them to be coincident. Same result, we get a fully defined sketch, but now it's anchored to something else. So when I go over here to the planes, this plane, the right plane, is going through that guy. If you knew you were designing something symmetrical that was going to be the same on either side of this, it's not a bad way to go. I just closed out of the sketch, and now we just see that it's a gray sketch. It's out there on the XY plane, as we can see over here. Now I want to go back in and add some more or modify that, so I'll right-click on Sketch, go to Edit Sketch, and I'm going to go ahead and leave that relationship. Now let's try drawing something with a line. I'm going to go ahead and actually delete that sketch. Just pick it in the tree, click on it, hit delete, and get rid of it. And we'll start a new one. And I'll go ahead and start that one on the front plane as well. Sketch, go into line. And there's line really works nice. That is, it implies some things. Here's my origin again. I am going to go ahead and start out at that point. As I move it along, it is implying that by that yellow icon there in the bottom right hand corner below the cursor, below the pencil if you will, that it's going to be horizontal. If I get 
a ways off of horizontal, then it doesn't imply that at all. But if I get anywhere near it, then it says, okay, that's going to, I'm going to give it a relationship of horizontal. So we don't have to spend all day, just kind of take the time to line things up with these guidelines. And we will get lines that automatically are horizontal or vertical. If we don't want that, we can go into the settings and turn off uh, these leaving these automatic relations. I don't recommend doing that. I would just say to slow down a little bit when you're sketching and you know take your time so that you let it imply what you want or if you really didn't want it horizontal of course draw it a little off angle and then it won't imply that. If you ever wanted to change your mind you know right now this guy I can grab a hold of these and exercise the part. I can move any of this around except for the origin which is anchored down on there but notice that it stays horizontal or vertical because that's the relation that it has. If I change my design intent and I say well I don't want this line to be vertical I'm gonna have that at some sloping angle so hit that uh, relation and delete it. Now when I grab a hold of this line if I grab it just as a line it stays vertical but if I grab a hold of up here now that can be whatever slope that we want it to be. And so the relation is what ties that down. If I grab a hold of this line and say, no, I've decided I want you back to vertical. Now I've got a vertical sketch. Another nice tool in the line command is you can toggle back and forth between line and arc real simply. And I, I haven't seen this documented that much, that is that it's talked about much, but I think it's a useful tool if you know that you're going to be going from straights to rounds or curves or whatever. And I'll show you what I mean. Is you know, we can just draw the outline like we did here, but if I start a line, I'll make sure it's horizontal. I can go up to the next line, and as long as I just keep sketching normally, I'm going to get straight lines. But now say I want an arc here. All I got to do is go back and touch this last point. Now I don't mean pick it, that is press anything on the mouse, just touch it. And when you come back out, you've got an arc there. And so I have some options. I'll do quarter of an arc. And then it switches back to lines again. I'll do that. And now I'm going to do something where I do kind of like a slot shape here. So I'll come down a little ways. Then I'll go back and touch it again. And now I get this shape. And it automatically will give me quarter arcs, half arcs, etc. Well, I want half an arc because it's going to be a slot. So just let those guidelines work. Click and it switches back to straight lines again. Go up there and line up with that guy. Use those guidelines, that little light blue guideline across there. Use that. It isn't anything that I would totally trust for all relations. I would go back and double check if I don't have all the relations I need. But it's sure a great place to start. You know that you're right in line with that other feature over there. So then let's just go out here to that guy and line up and close that. So that's a real, you know, useful way. I didn't have to keep coming up to two lines, arc circles. I can just stay in line and I can flip flop back and forth or toggle back and forth just by going back and touching that line. Now, as far as getting a sketch into fully defined mode, let's talk about that for just a second. Right now, I kind of have two sketches going and I really want to play with this one that has a little more complexity to it. So I'm just going to select all that, hit the delete key. It's out of here. I'll hit F for fit, that's F like Frank or fit, and it'll fit whatever I've got on the screen. And now I'm really into this subject, this idea, do I have to have everything black? Do I have to have it fully defined? Now a lot of books that I've read, uh, different SolidWorks books, will talk about, you know, that you need to nail everything down. I don't really like to work that way when I'm designing. Now if I have all the dimensions laid out in front of me, they're all in some you know a reference guide, manual, uh, textbook, exercise, whatever, then sure I'll just work with the dimensions given and I will nail everything down so that all of this blue turns black and down here says fully defined. But what I tend to do is if I'm designing this thing, I'll refine the areas that are functionally required by dimensions and relations, and then I'll leave things loose that I don't care about yet. At some point, I do go back and fully define it, just so that they won't move around, they, they won't be flexible or anything. I call that exercising the sketch, and we'll kind of go through that as, as we go.